Ready. Okay. Uh, Jay, why don't you go ahead first and then Matt. Well, hi, Jeff. Uh, thanks for doing this. Um, just wondering if you could give us an update on the uh, ever-present quarterback competition going through after week one of, uh, of practice. Well, as you might imagine, um, lots of good players getting reps, and that's as we've as we've talked about many times. Um, excited about all those guys, you know. I think um, anytime you have a competition, everybody wants to know who's got the edge, and certainly we're not in position to say that. But anytime there's a competition going on, whether it's at tight end or right guard or quarterback, the guy who has the most experience tends to hold an edge, and you know I would say for that reason, Zach's played a little bit more, so he's got a little bit more knowledge. Um, but as everyone knows. Um, Jaron and Baylor are not only talented, but proven now and, and played in big games and, and performed well. And then we really like Soljay as well. He's having a really nice camp and, um, you know, he's one of those guys that has stepped in and shown that um, the moment is not too big for him. He doesn't mind being a freshman out there with a bunch of older guys. And um, I'm, I'm enjoying what I'm seeing from all four of those guys. Who has stood out to you, Jeff, in, in the first week of camp? I know it's not a lot of reps underneath everyone, but maybe who's caught your eyes so far? At any position? Yeah, on whole offense. Yeah, so I would say certainly Matt Bushman. Um, I think he he's um, improved since last year. And guys that are that are coming back for their senior year, you know, sometimes they improve a little and sometimes they take a big jump. And I've really been impressed with the jump that he's taken. Um, he, he's had great ball skills since the day that he probably uh, first touched a ball. And so that's never been an issue for him. But uh, running good routes and becoming a, a consistent blocker um, have been two things that I can see he's worked on a lot. He looks stronger to me. He looks more fluid. And I think he's doing both of those things better. Um, Dax Milne has stuck out, made some big plays with the ball in the air. Um, I would say um, in the offensive line, Brady Christensen, another guy that has performed well, but his play has taken a significant jump since, um, since last season. And I think really the entire offensive line is looking better, playing with a, with a more physical demeanor, but Brady in particular. Um, is just really playing at a high level consistently right now. So those are the first guys that, that come to mind. Thanks. So let's go Mitch, Jared, Dick. Hey, thanks, Jeff. Uh, you know, it, it's interesting this year with the unique offseason, obviously unprecedented, and you also have an experienced football team this year compared to years past. But what or who who have been some of the newcomers? Because you have a, a, an infusion of talented guys, especially at wide receiver, that are new faces. Who have been some newcomers that have shown some flashes that say, you know, maybe we got something here that these guys could potentially contribute? Yeah. So I mentioned Soul J. Obviously, he's shown some really good things, and all of those young receivers really have. Um, Chris, Terrence, uh, Cody, and Miles have um, have all made plays in practice. Um, and so I, I think all of them have a chance to contribute this year. And, and uh, it's a good thing because we're certainly um, in a position where we need some guys to step up there. And uh, so all four of those young receivers, I would say. Um, in the offensive line, Connor Pay um, has been a guy that's, that's uh, stepped in there and gone with the twos a little bit and has impressed me as a guy that's right off his mission. Uh, most of the time for alignment, it takes him a little bit longer until he looks like he could do anything. But he's doing uh, some positive things already. So of the young guys that are that are here um, for the first time on the field this fall, those are the guys that jump out. Go ahead, Jared. Hey, Jeff. At media day last year, I think it was, although it seems like it was eons ago, we talked a little bit about military terminology and, and your respect for the military and, and some of the things that are there. What's it like getting ready to start a season against a military academy, being play, you know, playing a game at the Naval Academy like this? And, and just for you, what's that like? Yeah, it's a, it's a great honor. You know, I've played, I've played um, against Army once at West Point, and that was really cool. I've played against Air Force 
a bunch of times and have a, a great amount of respect for their program and the, the types of players that they have. And, um, and Navy, with what they've done, um, coming off winning a, a Commanders in Chief trophy and having done that a number of times recently, just um, got the utmost respect for their staff and their players. And it's going to be a real challenge for us. I hope people realize that, but one that, that we're honored to take on and excited about. Go ahead, Dick, and then Coach, Jake. Coach, a lot of expectations on the offensive line because there are a lot of experienced guys, guys that you've already been through the battles with. What do you think would be the biggest step that they might take this fall? Toughness. Toughness. They're talented, and they've shown at times that, that they can play at a high level. What they have not shown to this point is that they are going to be the toughest guys on the field all of the time. And from what I've seen, the first two days that we've been in pads, it appears to me that they're ready to take that step. And it's, it's way too early for me to make a, a real assessment on that, but I'm, I'm pleased with the progress that I've seen, but the expectations are high for that group, and they should be. And if um, really I think for them and for our offense, they need to play with a high level of aggression and violence. And if they'll do that, that'll be the biggest jump not only that group can take, but our entire offense can take. Jeff, I wanted to ask, in terms of preparing for this fall camp, how different has this experience been as compared to the rest of your coaching career? It's been interesting, for sure. Just like we're doing this right here and like we've been doing meetings for, for months now, doing it um, remotely has been a challenge, but it's also provided different ways for us to interact with each other and build relationships with our players. And so that's been, that's been a, a challenge, but a good one. Uh, the other thing that, that I would say is that I feel a little bit better about it than I might have at other times because we have so much experience returning. Really, with the exception of receiver, um, most of the guys that we have coming back will be, will be names and faces that everyone is familiar with. And, and that's really for the first time since I've been here um, that, that we'll be playing with a majority of upperclassmen. Because of that, I feel a little bit better about the work that's been done over the last five months than I would have had we been in this situation when we didn't have much spring ball and we didn't have much of an opportunity to work with them in person for the last few months. And so uh, from what I've seen thus far, I'm pleased with what I see of the work that's been done. And I think we're certainly further along maybe than we could be and maybe some, than some other teams could be because of our experience. Let's go to Jay and Matt. Hey Jeff, what kind of emotional bump or lift did uh, the, yesterday's announcement that you had an opponent, that you had maybe on the schedule, what did that do for not only the players but the coaches? I, I think for all of us it gave us a, a nice little jolt of energy. You know, you just um, – you continue as a coach to try to preach the message that um, that we're going to prepare and be ready for whenever, whomever, kind of like the uh, the Roman army, a nameless, faceless opponent. And there's certainly some value in that. But when you can put a stamp on a name and a date, then it allows you the opportunity to say, OK, now we know exactly what we're working for and, and when that day will be here. And so, yeah, I, I'm just like the players. As soon as I heard the news, you know, I jumped on and texted my wife and my best buddy and, and, uh, and let them know how excited I was too. Regarding the, the quarterback room, what are you specifically looking for for one of your quarterbacks to separate themselves and be the guy? I think consistency. They're all talented, and they've all shown in flashes that they can that they can be great players, and they've all shown at times that they that they can make some poor decisions as well. And so I think the guy, being that we have so much talent there, the guy who can play most consistently, um, operating our offense, controlling um, the the football, taking care of it, um, that guy, the guy that plays most consistently, will. Will, will be the guy that you'll see on day one. Let's go, Jared and Mitch. Jeff, you've uh, had a chance to coach a lot of places, been a lot of places across the country, and I imagine that the connections you have around the country, there's got to have been people that have 
been impacted directly by COVID-19 and this pandemic. How has that impacted you? How has that affected your perspective on football? Just because it is a reality that we're all dealing with in different ways. Well, you know, for a while, all of us were in that position, I think, some people longer than others, where we heard about it, but we didn't know anyone that was directly impacted by it. And so that first person that you know who really had to go through it, then then it hits you. Okay, now it feels real to me. One of those moments for me, it was a good friend of mine who's who's a coach, and and um, and I was I was texting with him and just checking in on him, and he said that he had it, and it was one of the most difficult things that he had gone through in a number of years, and um, you know he was fortunate that it hit him this summer and didn't hit him during the season, and I thought to myself, um, you know, we really do need to be careful, and um, I think all of us, whether you're uh, a player or a coach, we recognize the importance of at least doing what we can to control what we can control and give ourselves the best chance to stay healthy. Go ahead, Mitch, and then we'll go Mitch, Dick, and Jake. No, that might be it. Jeff, you mentioned that uh, you've seen a big jump uh, from Matt Bush. I'm just kind of curious with with Zach Wilson, have you seen, or what areas have maybe you seen a potential big jump in through week one of, of camp this year? I think his arm strength is better than it has been since, uh, you know, since he had the shoulder injury, you know. So last year, obviously, coming back from, from the shoulder, I think those who, who have an educated eye probably were able to tell that his arm strength at the beginning of last season wasn't wasn't quite what it had been when he was a freshman. The ball just didn't quite come out with the same kind of zip that it did before. And I think it impacted how he played. I think he tried his best to control it, but that's, that's, that was a lot against a, a tough early season schedule. Then he had the thumb and, and um, you know, it was just, it was a tough situation for a guy, especially a guy coming off with so much hype. And then he comes back for the next year and he's playing but he's not really full speed the whole season. It would be like, um, like maybe a, a receiver who's trying to run, but he's got a nagging hamstring injury and he can't quite run full speed. Same thing for a quarterback. And so um, what I see more than anything is the ball's just coming out of his hand better. It's got more zip on it. And I think he's healthier than he's been in over a year. And I think that's probably the biggest difference. Thanks, Jeff. Jeff, could you talk a little bit about how important it is, you've been around in so many places, of having an offense that you've tinkered and you've fiddled with and you've got it installed, um, and then you have young players that are coming along in that system. How important is that continuity for everybody in what you're trying to get done? Yeah, it, it, it's really important. So two things I would, I would say about that. The first thing, and probably the most important, is coaches being wise enough to make decisions about how much you can do, and there's a balance there in, in your system and, and doing as much as you can to present problems for a defense, but not so much that it becomes overly complex and something that you can't execute consistently. And then the next thing is a coaching staff being wise enough to, to select the plays that your players can execute the best, doing what your players can do better than anyone else. I mean, it's... It, it makes no difference what play I like or, or what route A-Rod or Fessy like. What can our players do better than other things? And those are the things that, that I think we've settled on better than we have at any time since I've been here. I think we know our players better than we've known them before. And part of that goes along with us being here longer and growing with the players. Now we've got players coming back that we've been working with for a couple of years. And so I think that gives us uh, greater knowledge of their skill set as they've as, as they've grown and progressed, and so now we know a little bit more about what that system will look like. So when we bring the young guys in and we inject that that youthful talent, now we're bringing them into a system hopefully that's a little bit more stable than it might have been our first year, and so there's not as much fluctuation in the formations or the play calls or the the presentation that we might give and. Um, I think it certainly it certainly um, helps for us to have um, experience as players, but also um, coaches, a, a staff coming back that's been together for a couple of years too. Let's go, Jake, then Greg, and then we'll let Coach Brown go after that. 
Jeff, I wanted to ask you, when I talked to Coach Roderick during the spring, he talked about the fact you guys were so good between the 20s, moving up and down the field, but inside the red zone, you guys wanted to have a renewed emphasis on scoring touchdowns and not settling for field goal attempts and the like. What are you guys going to do here in fall camp to hopefully emphasize that? Yeah, you're right. We've already been emphasizing it. We were 16th in the country last year in trips to the red zone. So we got there. It, it, the number of times we got there would say we're a top 20 offense. Um, however, getting the, that's, like, that's like getting close to the hoop and missing layups in basketball, although I would argue that <laughs> maybe getting in the end zone against a good defense inside the 20 isn't as easy as a layup. Um, but the point is we got to get better in that red zone. We were just barely over 50% in our touchdown um, in our touchdown percentage once we got in the red zone last year. So that's something that we started with an emphasis in and early in spring ball, and we only got a few practices in, but we started with that being an emphasis day one. And then as we've encouraged our players to work on their own this summer, they've been working on those areas that, that need the most emphasis, that being red zone and our goal line short yardage package, that being another area that we feel like we can we can improve upon. And so those are things that, that we're talking about every day that we meet. We're working on every day in practice, and it'll be a more consistent point of emphasis in, in actually just practicing those situations. Or if we're installing a certain route, we're spending time on how that route looks if you're on the, the seven yard line as opposed to the 27 yard line as well. So just, a, just an increased emphasis. And I think, you know, our players, we have the type of players who want to please. They want to do well. And, you know, our first year, we were really good in the red zone. It was one of the best things that we did two years ago. And, and our touchdown percentage was one of the better ones around. But then last year, we really emphasized third down percentage and creating big plays. And we made huge jumps. We jumped like, I think, 45 or 48 spots in our third down efficiency. And we jumped tremendously in explosive plays last year. And so that was great. But for some reason or another, um, we lost a little bit of that in the red zone. So I think an emphasis on that while continuing to spend time on those on those other issues will get us where we want to go. Before the last question, um, we're going to get Coach Satake here just to give a quick reaction to the Navy game. So stick around after after this last question. Hey, All right, Greg. Can you, can you size up the running back room for us? Yeah, a lot of bodies, a lot of bodies. You know, um, obviously guys coming back uh, with with the most experience. Uh, Lupini um, is is the farthest ahead in his knowledge of the game, his leadership, his maturity. I really like where he's at, and um, and I think he's taken a step forward from where he's been in the past. Um, Tyler Algier is with us full time now, and he's been a guy that's gone back and forth showed what he could do a little bit later last season after we had some injuries. And I really like where he is. I think he's in better shape. I think he's leaner, stronger, and faster than he's ever been before. And so I'm really pleased with what I see from him so far. Jackson McChesney is making progress. Um, still has a ways to go just in, in terms of learning how to play the position because he hasn't played it as much as the other guys, but obviously has, has a lot of talent. Um, and then we've got a couple of new guys there as well. Um, we, we've moved a couple of guys from other positions to see what they can do. Um, Javel Brown and Luke Andrada, we'll see, we'll see if that's a position where they stay or whether they end up somewhere else. Both of them good athletes who could do a variety of things. Um, Bruce Garrett, freshman who's coming in, has a lot of talent but also has a lot to learn. I like what I see from him. Um, and then, uh, and then Hinkley obviously is a guy that that we're excited about. He's a guy that 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 A Rod and I have liked since we saw him a year ago, and felt like we were going to get him here at some point. I'm just really glad it worked out sooner than later because I think I think we're going to be be glad that he's here and, and um, he hasn't done a lot yet, but I think he's a really talented kid.